time. We're on a roller coaster right at the top. A roller coaster's a simple machine. Actually, it's a group of simple machines. Yeah, we got ramps, we got pulleys, we got wheels all working together. Ha ha! Come on! Bill Nye, the science guy. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Do you realize the same scientific principles that let us lift things with our arms and reach for things help us rev race cars up? They let us get things off the ground. Talking about machines, simple machines, uh, like wheels. See, wheels on cars let cars go this way while the road's going that way. So wheels, pulleys, ramps, and ropes all help make our work easier. Simple machines let us change the size and direction of forces. Uh, they're machines. They're simple. They're everywhere. So take a look at this. It's a pulley, and there's another one on the ceiling. When I pull down on this rope, the wooden crate of science goes up. See, the pulley is changing the direction of the force. Let's tie this off now. There you go. Now let's say we want to move something, like this plastic water bottle. We want to take it to the other side of the lab. Well, we can use a simple machine. This is a catapult. It's a lever. Same thing. You ready? Three, Three two, dos, one. Uno. That's the way we always do it. See, this is a lever. Careful. See, it's a lever. There's weights on this end, and on this end, that's where the bottle went. So the weight goes down, and the bottle goes up. Levers allow us to change the size and direction of forces. And the key is in the middle. This is the pivot, or fulcrum, of the lever. Allows this end to go down, that end to go up, and the bottle goes sailing across the room. Hey, you want to see it again? Uh-huh. Ready? OK. Three, two, one. lever at home is easy. All you need is a spoon. This kind of lever is called a catapult. Like all levers, this one has three parts. Two ends and a fulcrum. A fulcrum is where the catapult touches the table. We're going to be using ping pong balls so we don't break anything. Now, catapults are levers and they help us shoot things into the air. While this side only has a little ways to go down, this side has a long ways to go up. Ready? Fire one! Fire two! These are levers, a hammer pulling a nail, a crowbar, and your forearm. Now, what do you need to make a lever? Right, a fulcrum, a pivot, a place to turn around, a stick and a fulcrum, and you've got a lever. It's a simple machine. This is a teeter shot. And with a lever, I can 
long change of direction through forces. All I need is a lever, a long rod or plank, a fulcrum, and a place to push off against. When I go up, I see you. And as I come down, I saw you. It's a seesaw, get it? It's also a lever. <laughs> Today on Consider the Fong, we're going to talk about wheels and levers. So please consider the following. Mira, that means look. If I push down on this side of the lever, this side goes up. We can lift the can. We can do some work. See, the lever pivots about the fulcrum, about the place in the middle. This side down, this side up. And suppose we took the lever and folded it so it looked like this. Same fulcrum, same lever, but now to get this end to go up, I push on this end sideways. This end sideways, this end up. Okay, suppose we hooked a few of these levers together so they looked like this. See, it kind of looks like a wheel, doesn't it? See, it's a bunch of levers all pivoting around one fulcrum, like a wheel. Take a look. See? Good afternoon, sports fans. Another exciting test of skill and endurance about to unfold. Timmy Ticker here with Lance Yardstick, and welcome to the annual Tour de Science 93. It's the one we've all been waiting for, the race that pits defending champ, science guy Bill Nye, against those ruthless challengers, bad boy Bob Sleafmaster, and Mark the Maniac from Down Under. That's right, Timmy, a formidable challenge indeed. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself, Lance. And one other thing, this race will allow us to see just how efficient a machine the bicycle really is. Well, that's right, Timmy. And speaking of machines, did you know that the wheels on bicycles are actually simple machines? Not only that, bicycles also have gears, other wheels, that are also simple machines. That's right, Lance, and I'm sure those simple machines will get quite a workout on the grueling course here today. 15 hills, and boy, are they steep. Well, that's where the gears will come in really handy, Timmy. You see, gears are wheels with teeth. The front gears and the back gears are connected to each other by a chain. By changing the combination of front and back gears, the rider is able to put out a lot less effort for a longer distance, in this case, more cranking on the pedals to get up the hill. Oh, Nelly, it's really something. Well, it sure is, Lance, and the action is just about to start. Using the fire pole is a fast and fun way to get down here, but using it to get back up, well, that's another story. Ah, this is too much work. Let's try something else, like a ladder. But a ladder can be pretty steep, and that has some disadvantages. We could use a ramp and spread the work out. We'll get the same height off the floor by walking a longer distance. It'll be easier to walk, but we'll have to walk farther. Voila! Now there's another way that we use ramps every day. You might not have thought of it before. This is a stairway. It's like a ramp and a ladder combined. Of course, if you don't like the ladder, the ramp, or the stairs, you can use one of these. But you gotta be careful, real careful. I said, uh, careful! Careful. Ramps make things easier to lift. Watch this. If I try to pick this book straight up, watch what happens. I made this ramp out of an old bookshelf and a couple of phone books. If I pull this book straight up the ramp, the string is strong enough and it takes a lot less force. The force we need to pull the book up the ramp is smaller than the force we need to 
can pull it straight up. Cool. And now, Bill Nye in A Scientist Descending a Staircase. A spiral staircase is a lot like a screw. To see why, first you have to get tiny. This is a screw. See how the thread wraps around? It's the same way a spiral staircase wraps around. A screw is a ramp wrapped around a rod. Remember how a staircase is a ramp? Well, a spiral staircase is a screw. So spiral staircases, screws, ramps, staircases are all simple machines. Huh? A screw is like an inclined plane, a ramp wrapped around a stick. The distance between the threads is called the pitch. Look at all the things you can do with it. You can jack up cars, jack up houses. You can even make hamburger. What? That, that can't be right. something big you need moved? Well, then you need something big to move it. And at the Brute Force Moving Company, we're big. It doesn't matter if you want a bear on your roof, dumbbells in your attic, or 10,000 magazines on your coffee table. Here at the Brute Force Moving Company, we always take the fastest, straightest route. We don't care how much force it takes. So if you've got the weight, we've got the crate and the strength to move it straight. The Brute Force Moving Company. This is a, a prosthesis or uh, a, an arm for someone who is born without a hand or they have an accident and lose part of their forearm. And they operate it by pulling on the straps that we attach to their back. And it's attached to a cable that when we pull on the cable, it's similar to a bicycle. Uh, when, you, when you pull on the handles for your brakes on the bicycle, it works the same way. It pulls uh, from one end to the other and that's how they can open it. So when they round their back, they can open the, the hook, and when they let their back flatten out, then the hook closes. Just like a shirt or a blouse, you'd slide, you'd slide this and consider it like your sleeve. When you reach out there, if you want to grab something out there, you let your other shoulder back. When we make a prosthesis for someone who doesn't have their elbow, we have to be able to bend their elbow as well as open the hook when they're trying to operate it. And in order to get the elbow to bend, we need to make a little lever out in front of the elbow joint so that it bends the elbow when we pull on the cable. So this is a prosthesis for someone who's missing their whole leg, and usually someone who has had cancer um, has an amputation at this level. And this prosthesis has a foot and a knee joint that bends uh, the same way that your knee bends. And it also has a hip joint that bends so that when you sit down, you can you can sit in a chair. Sort of like taking the applications of engineering and helping someone to get better. And by knowing about the levered arms and putting the feet in the proper position so they help you to walk just like you and I walk, um, and putting this all together, we can get someone uh, back playing on the playground and running and jumping just like they did before they had their accident. Do you have something big you need moved? Well, then you need people with big ideas about how to move it. And at Simply Movers, we've got big ideas. Need a bicycle in your bedroom? We've got pulleys. A lawyer on your landing? We've got levers. A bundle in a barrow? 
we've got ramps. So if it's big, if it's heavy, if it's awkward, whatever, we've got a pulley, a ramp, and a lever. Simply Movers. Call us. Now this rope is attached to a crane. And a crane uses pulleys. Simple machines. Of course, they're big simple machines, but they're simple machines. Science! And they're neck and neck. Sleefmeister taking the lead as we go into the second leg of the Tour de Science 93. That's right, Timmy. It's a gear grinding competition between these simple machines. I couldn't have said it better myself, Lance. Say you're building a treehouse and you needed some stuff. Say the stuff was really heavy. What would you do? I'd use pulleys. A pulley makes things easier to lift because it spreads the work. See this rope? Before it just used to go from me to Cammy. But now it goes from me to Cammy to me and then back to Cammy. Now she's gonna have to pull a whole lot more rope to get stuff up here. But more rope means I won't have to work as hard each time I pull down. So now I can lift something he can't. Here it comes. With a pulley, she can pull really heavy stuff all the way to the tree fort. Pulleys. No sweat. Back in the 1800s, all these cable cars used to be pulled by horses. Okay, the cable cars operate by a bunch of levers and pulleys, which are very simple to operate and maintain. Uh, now I'll take you down below and show you how the grip works. These are the giant pulleys that pull the cable underneath the streets of San Francisco. There's many cables and pulleys that take them around curves and up and down the hills. I need some help, you guys. Who wants to volunteer? We're in the sand. Oh. Okay, here I'm Come on. Simple by simple machines. And they're headed down the home stretch. Sleethmeister in the lead, but Mark the Maniac fast approaching with last year's winner, Bill Nye, bringing up the rear. You know, it has been quite a tour to science this year, an incredible cauldron of competitiveness. That's right, Timmy, a stupendous showcase of simple machine. Absolutely, and now Mark the Maniac takes the lead. Boy, is he mean. I know what you mean, Timmy. And Bill Nye now is making his move. Unbelievable. He passes Sleefmeister, and now Mark the Maniac, and it is neck and neck at the wire, and it is Nye by a nose. Yes, Bill Nye wins the Tour de Science 93. Lance is on the scene to get Nye's reaction. Can we get a word with you? Great race, incredible finish. How did you do it? Was it the gear ratios on your very simple machine? That was a big part of it, Lance, big part. And also, you know, I hung back there and I made my move at the end, but I think the biggest thing for me, uh, it's my show. Oh, yes, yes, so right right Absolutely. Let me 
Association with the National Science Foundation.